All right, so we're gonna talk about Bondo today uh, and the use of it on the exterior of homes. Um, Bondo should not be used on any of our projects on the exteriors of homes, and we're gonna talk about um, the reasons why. So I've got a few examples right here. Both of them are Bondo brand. Um, one's labeled wood filler, one's labeled all-purpose putty, and there's also the, the traditional style with a car on the front of it, just typical Bondo. Um, there's a lot of issues with Bondo and what, what it does to our projects, um, but, but the reason as to why we use them is, is what I want to talk about right now. So the reasons why our painters typically use it is to address wood rot issues, and there's an underlying issue to that, which is the wood rot itself. Wood rot should be replaced and should be addressed with the customer. Um, it should only be upon the customer's request that we use wood Bondo for uh, the fix of wood rot. The other issues that we use Bondo for are uh, poor craftsmanship from a carpenter. Now, if, if you address or come across an issue where there's poor craftsmanship from a carpenter, you need to address that with the carpenter, the general contractor, or the customer. And again, upon their request is the only time that you can use Bondo. We're gonna show you, uh, instead of Bondo, how to address these issues um, with caulking. And you may think, well, caulking's not the same as Bondo, and that's right, that's a good thing. We don't wanna use Bondo. Caulking's gonna make our jobs last a lot longer. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, new construction or new fascia, and whether to use Bondo or caulking. Obviously, you know my answer is gonna be caulking. Um, we're gonna look at the corner here as one obvious area to apply caulking or Bondo. Um, and then obviously your, your new nail heads are places that need to be filled. Now, um, this is not set too low, but it's, it's, it's getting close. And this is a perfectly set nail along with a perfectly set nail. So we won't have to do much here and here. We may have to do a little bit more on this uh, nail head right here. So the steps of the process are, is that we're gonna do a light sand and get rid of the debris. Uh, we're going to apply a primer coat so that we apply a primer to the nail heads um, along with filling up the surface of those holes a bit as well. After that, we're going to apply a coat of caulking, focusing on applying it to the nail head and slightly around, cleaning the outside surface, allowing that to dry, applying either another coat of primer or paint, either one's fine, and then going back, letting that caulking sink and dry and harden as much as caulking does applying caulking again, and then final coating over top of it. By the time we're done, we're, we'll have filled up that space enough to where it looks rather flush and less noticeable. Our goal is not to make it disappear. The biggest issue that you run into with making it disappear is you make it more obvious. This is a textured surface. Bondo is not a textured surface. So by applying Bondo, you're not going to, you're, you're not only gonna have a failure area later down the road, but you're gonna be making those areas more obvious and, and filling up the surface to make it look worse. So this is the number one no-no for applying Bondo to a fascia board, addressing two joints together. First of all, the biggest issue is that we're using a resawn fascia board and again, a smooth material. That's the number one issue, it looks terrible. Number two issue is this was painted less than a month ago and we have already cracked between the two joints because these two fascia boards move back and forth constantly from heat to cold, moist to dry, and Bondo does not. Bondo is a fixed solid surface and wood is a moving surface. So when that mo wood moves, it separates itself from the Bondo. And so again, number one place to not use Bondo. Okay, so we're gonna apply caulking now that we've put primer on there. We're using a black caulking. So if there are any failures in the future, you don't have a, a white caulking showing through black paint. So I always recommend color matching your caulking to the paint that you're planning on using. Um, if that's not possible, then you should be just fine if done properly. So I'm gonna lightly apply to each area. So uh, the heavier ones I applied more to, the ones that didn't have much of a nail head sunk in, I still applied caulking to, because it's gonna make it more consistent looking. So again, number one 
do not do or no no is uh, using a putty knife. Using a putty knife is going to, again, create a smooth surface once you're done painting. So if we have putty knife and it's still wet, we're okay. It actually looks really flush and you might get the feeling like, oh, wow, I did a good job. Let me leave the putty knife. Well, again, you have created much, much bigger eyesores. So what I like to do is take a brush and brush it back over. Now what happens is it does pull the caulking out of the holes. So if you're trying to get this done quicker in one pass, then the brush is not the way to go. Um, if you're trying to do it right, then the brush really helps. Again, just like the stucco video, you may wanna kind of work around the, the holes themselves and, uh, and make it sure it looks really nice. So after this, we're going to apply another coat of primer and then more caulking. If you don't have the time for another coat of caulking or primer, you can go straight to caulking again and again until the holes look correct. Now we'll do the center section. Um, as you can see, as I applied the caulking, it doesn't want to go into the crack that much. That is the reason that we apply primer first. Primer with the roller does push into the, the, the gap and closes that gap naturally with the primer. Primer and caulking are very similar in materials, um, but for, for what you can, you can use your finger or rag, but you do want to work it into the crack. So up and down doesn't really push it in. We want to work it really into there. Uh, you can use a rag to get that back off. But again, I really like the brush technique and making sure that we don't have any smooth surfaces. You can still see that this each edge of the fascia board, but that's okay. We're going to be applying more primer and more uh, caulking and more paint. And once that's all done, it will smooth itself out and look natural. Okay, so now I've applied my second coat of caulking over top of uh, my second coat of primer. Um, I wanted to clarify something earlier I said about the putty knife. Um, it's not to not use a putty knife, it's to be careful when using putty knife. So make sure that you're focusing it into the hole and not past the hole. So it really, on the second pass, it really allows me to fill up and get a lot closer to that edge with the putty knife. But then again, being very concerned with past the hole itself. So now I'm ready to apply the uh, first coat of paint. So this is our final product. You can tell where the nail holes were. You can tell that they're still dipped in a little bit. This is what we expect from a, a well done, finished, filled product. Okay, so here's the final product. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, you can see where the nail heads are if you look for them, uh, but overall we're giving the customer a quality job that's gonna last forever. Uh, to reiterate this whole thing, we don't use Bondo because we can't warranty it. Uh, and without the customer's express permission to use Bondo in certain areas, uh, we'll be warranting something that we shouldn't be. So again, don't use Bondo. Please use the caulking. You may have to do multiple layers and uh, check with your project manager or estimator before um, thinking about putting Bondo on your next project. Okay, so this is an example right here of overfilling a surface with either Bondo or caulking using a putty knife and basically destroying the texture of the wood. Um, in the sunlight, it looks about 10 times worse than this, but example of uh, overdoing a filler. Okay, so I made an example of you, for you guys uh, to demonstrate the difference between Bondo and caulking. This uh, piece of cardboard is representative of a fascia board or of wood. They are similar materials, um, although this is much softer than a fascia board. Um, it, facial boards do move in the same way that a cardboard box would. 
So this is, again, I tore out the center uh, layer of this uh, as if we were to be joining two boxes together. The back paper is my representation of it being nailed to a house or, or uh, uh, that fascia. So what we have down the center is from here to here is caulking. Uh, you can see there is a joint. It's not seamless. And from here across or above is Bondo. Now, I didn't take the time to sand it, but you can get the idea. Now, what I, when I bend this, you're gonna have two different reactions, and so make sure you watch. Okay, so to talk about this a little bit more, as as weather mo as weather changes and it goes from hot to cold and moist to dry uh, fascia boards do move slightly and as they move just slightly we do get this reaction so by packing a bunch of bondo into a joint that's going to move you will have failure and it will be noticeable again this bottom side has caulking although there is a joint there it is much better much longer lasting much more durable than the bondo solution or bondo option so again, to reiterate, we do not use Bondo on joints. We do not use Bondo on exteriors of homes.